and welcome to the show. It's a huge show with a huge audience of, well, Cadence Rose. Hi, Cadence. How are you? <laughs> I'm hanging in. How about you? All right. Uh, before we get to the images, you had a question about TTL Flash, and I mentioned to you that I don't use it. And I'll tell you why. Uh, we have to go back to film days. And when I would shoot uh, film for clients, we I would shoot transparency film, slide film. Are you familiar with that? Have you ever shot it? Uh, I don't think I have. Okay. When you shoot slide film, it's the same piece of film that went through your camera. They take it out and they process it. It's not a negative that you can then put it in larger and then make it brighter or darker and burn it, whatever. You get the piece of film exposed how you exposed it. That's it. Nothing else. So nailing it was really important. Um, mm -hmm. As a fashion and uh, uh, portrait you know, people shooter, a lot of beauty work, fashion work people, I couldn't bracket. What would happen if I was bracketing and the shot that everybody liked was the one that's a half stop dark? Because if it's a half stop dark, it's hard to fix. And we didn't have Photoshop. We didn't have all those things. It was an underexposed picture. So what I would do is I'd take a little bit of film off the roll before they process that roll and I'd have them one run what's called a snip test. And it would be three or four frames of the image that I had shot. I had metered it, I'd Polaroided it. I knew everything was working. So now I got those, those three or four shots off that roll. I could then say to the lab, hey, what I would like you to do is push this film a third of a stop. I think I'm pretty close, but if you, know, if you could process it up a third of a stop, that would make it right. And then when I laid down that roll of film on a light box, every single shot matched. That red, the red in that dress was the same red in every single image because I never changed the camera and the processing was all uniform. And of course, the rule was, one outfit per roll and if you if you didn't get it in that roll you did a second roll but you couldn't change roles because if you changed over to a green dress and a different background that processing may be pulleth a third of a stop mm -hmm. so i did it for absolute control over the way my images came back so let's jump into ttl ttl gives you a good usable image something most of the time if you know how to use it. Me, never worked for me, never got into it. However, it changes based on how much of the subjects in your picture, uh, where it's sitting. I know, and I know there's probably a Nikon shooter out there listening to this, this uh, recording going, wait, wait, we can hold our, yes, you can. You can do that. Um, I've met a, a total whopping uh, three Nikon shooters who actually knew they could do that. Uh, Nikon, you can get an exposure and then lock it down. So the TTL doesn't work anymore. It only worked for while you were finding it. Uh, cannot do that in Canon. So as you're moving around your subject, that ETTL and your subject is moving and twisting towards the light, that TTL is going to give you a little bit more for this one. Maybe because uh, it's a bare shoulders dress, so there's more skin, right? Then she turns away and then she's got a real high back uh, red dress in the back. It's going to change exposures and give you a little more. It's all usable, but it doesn't match. And if someone's going to pay me that kind of money, I'm, I want them to match. I want that red to be every shot. The other thing, of course, to shooting digital is if they don't match, I can't do a batch process on them. I can't right. look at them and say, hey, you know, if I pop this up just a little bit and then apply this to the rest of them, uh-uh, not going to work. Because if everything's going to go up and down, up and down based on the TTL. So no, I'm not a TTL user. I'm a manual flash guy. I think you have more control. I think you have far less, what do you want to call it? The, the, the standing around trying to figure out what the heck's going wrong. So we call it that. I like that. Because <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of that. Um, you know, oh, it's not, this isn't working or this is too dark or, you know, and I have to, then they're, they're over there fiddling with stuff. I don't fiddle with stuff when I'm shooting. Hmm. I. The feeling I was getting where it's like, this looks different. 
I didn't change anything. Why is it? Mm hmm. Oh, and the and the wider the and if you and if you back off your um. If you're standing there with a zoom like the twenty four to seventy, and you come in real tight for the face, um, the TTL through your camera is going to make a a different exposure than the TTL would be if you zoomed it back to twenty four, and there was more of the background. So now you're constantly fiddling with your you know exposure compensation dial, and like I say, I don't want to do that. I want to take photographs. I want my subject and I to have a connection. It's just us. We're chatting through the camera. We're making contact. And I'm not looking at the back of the camera going, oh, that's a little bright. I got to take this down. Oh, that's a little dark. I got to take this up. In fact, I don't want to look through the back of the camera once I've got my light set. That's it. I'm done. I'm going to go on and move. And if I get 50 shots or 500 shots and they're all I could just, you know, I could just pop another three fifths of a stop or something, or I mean, um, um, three tenths of a stop up. Okay, I can do that and apply it to every shot, and they all work. So that's my little thing. That's a, a good point. Like I've been trying to figure out, like, and I fiddle with the camera a lot, even when I'm not using flash because I'm relatively new to the mm -hmm. digital world and to being able to really see what happens real time. So it's very tempting to look at the back of the camera and say, oh, well, I can just tweak it a little bit. But then when I am when I bring it into Lightroom to post-process, I have to do e every single photo individually and play with the levels. And, you know, Ooh. that's a pain in the butt. <laughs> that's a nightmare. Oh, yeah. I know. I And I, you know, I know what you mean because... You know, I just did a road trip up in New Mexico. And when I'm shooting landscapes and stuff, that's what I do. I come back with 300 shots and I'm sitting there going, not one of them I'm going to process the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's just the nature of the subject. But if it's people, oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, 500 pictures for me is just like a headshot. I'll shoot, you know, 1,500, 1,600 pictures on a job. And um, wow. I, do, I am just not going to come back and have to have the art director say, Hey, I like these three. And me go, oh, okay, three. And he goes, oh, could I see these other 44? It's like, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll be up all night doing it. TZ joined us here. We'll invite TZ in. Hi, TZ. Hi, how TZ, are you? I'm fine. Uh, well, it's it's you and Cadence Rose. So we Cadence and I were just chatting about uh, why I don't use TTL flashes. And uh, you can... Uh, rerun the uh, little video and catch that when uh, with that first five minutes here so you can hear why I don't use it. I, I prefer to, to be more uh, absolute with my lighting across all um, forms of delivery. So, Cadence, you're the only one, the first one here today, and you're the first one who posted. <laughs> Being brave. Yes. Now, I will um, let you know that to Tomorrow morning, I'm sending a newsletter out. This mm -hmm. is for this group. And you will have the links to my um, Udemy classes. Okay. So you'll have the uh, how to, you know, portrait with simple gear and natural light portraiture. And uh, uh, hopefully that'll that'll teach you a little bit more. That'd be awesome. I'm about excited what you're doing. Excellent. Uh, I love your shot here. It's very, very, very emotional. Um, and you, you, is this window light? It is. Yep. She, I put her sort of not quite parallel to the window. So she got mm -hmm. that light in, under her face and because it was really dark in there and that was really the only space and just a whole bank of windows. Yep. Do you have a fill card? Uh, did, are you talking about flash? No, a fill card, a big white card. Oh, I don't. No. Okay. What, or I, I have a reflector that has a white side. Yes, yes. And you, but you didn't use it here, did you? I did not use it. Yeah. What we would, what you can do is you can actually bring that reflector so close to her that it's just outside of frame. Okay. You can watch this this light over here almost, and I say almost, be as bright over here. That'd be nice. Then what you do is you just pull it back until you get 
the ratio that looks good to you mm -hmm. and then make your shots. So um, my favorite was... is foam core, which you can get at Target. Oh, okay. Yep. Take a stand and a, and a clamp that you can get at, uh, at Home Depot, one of those uh, uh, A clamps. Just clamp uh -huh. that board to the top and just move that thing into uh, where it is. So, Okay. Cool. All right. Well, this is a very, very lovely shot. And your, your angle to the light is really pretty because it's picking up all through the hair here. And that is just a, a, uh, a nice touch to the photograph. Thank you. Very good. Cam Cleet, we got a good bye kiss here. Um, Pony's about to leave a little unexpectedly to a new home. Boy, I don't know. I hope it wasn't one of those uh, competitions that the horse people do where some horse wins and some horse loses and however they do it, then you lose your horse. Um, that would be pretty devastating for this young lady to lose her horse. Um, okay, Cam Cleet, that's fine. You got the uh, the strobe going on there. Um, I would I would say uh, I know that it's a it's a, a moment, but uh, this is when you 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 get right in. You need you. This is your shot right here. This is your shot. This is not your shot. This is your shot. Child, horse, blue ribbon. That's your shot. Get in there. I want to see the expression on her face. I want to see the eyes of that horse. Um, this is a shot that you did and you know I can see the flash shadow and everything and that's fine but we got to make it we got to make it so much more special so really move in really close Allison Diller okay uh, I have a young lady here next to this blue thing and the thing behind her we're using a fill flash so we got this very scary little shadow here it's not dark enough to be dramatic and it's not uh, light enough to not be noticed it's right here Here's what I do. Sometimes you have to use that, that fill flash. And it, it looks fine up here. I don't see really anything wrong with it up here. This is a problem. And that sometimes is always going to be a problem for this type of flash. It's on camera. Camera's tilted. It's going to throw that, that, that flash. So what you do is you take a second flash and you put it back behind the young lady. And you hit the wall with the second flash at about a half stop less than this flash, and that, that shadow will go away. If you don't have a second uh, light, turn your camera the other way and try to put the, the shadow back there. It wouldn't have shown back there. So if we flipped it over where the flash was on this side, it would push the, the shadow back here where we wouldn't see it. Um, a couple of, of uh, comments to this. We've got to... Um, Watch our tangents here. Her head is really close to me. It's not a pure tangent. It really isn't, but it just boy, drives me crazy. That that line comes right into her head there, and it, that that bothers me. The hand is flat to the, to uh, us, the viewers, so we're seeing a very large hand. When we're using hands, we want to see hands from the side, hands that give us the the side of the hand. The the hand in um, uh, profile, not the flat of the hand. Whenever they do this, and of course, then she's gripping with her knuckles, and we got little white knuckles going on here. That that's fine. She should be holding on just a little bit and seeing this profile here um, of the hand. Now, post processing, we can highlight this right along the back of her and into the shadow area. And using a and moving it to a new layer, uh, and then lighten the one behind it, and then just change that layer opacity. And getting rid of this little shadow line, not a problem, not a problem at all. Just take it out in Photoshop. Then yeah. give me a face that's bright, because her face is not. I mean, her face and this blue and this rust and this blue and this gray, all the same tones, tonality. If we made this black and white, it would all be kind of the same. Uh, and we don't want to do that. We want to brighten this face up. I want white eyeballs. Um, uh, the face is great. Beautiful girl. Everything's working on here. We can just really pull this shot up 
going to have to add some contrast to it. Uh, and also, I would think a little uh, highlight painting. All right, Kyle Jones. And Kyle, we've looked at this shot and uh, discussed it over on the pro thing. Um, and as I said there, uh, and I'll just quickly say it again, the uh, aperture was not wide enough. So we got all this building back here in focus, and that just competes with our folks here in Photoshop. Take this out. Um, you know, highlight. I'm sorry. Go right along the edges of these folks here and that building and move that to a new layer and Gaussian blurred about uh, 25% and you'll watch these people all of a sudden jump to the foreground. Two coaching. Um, this is interesting because this is actually using the tangent of this line to bring you right into this person's head. So it's kind of a, uh, you know, it's a leading line kind of thing. In uh, some cases, the, you know, making mistakes actually makes the uh, shot work better. Uh, and, I, and I don't think this was a mistake. I think this is exactly what two coach and want. Um, Yeah, and it, and he's and uh, two coaching says it's all about the lines. I think the lines are 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 powerful. We got regular um, uh, natural light that's happening here, and so these spotlights from above that we're not seeing are focused on these pictures. Now, this is brighter. I'm sorry, this is brighter than this, which is brighter than that, to make this shot really work more powerfully, I like to see this back wall be brought up a little bit so that she's dark and she's against a brighter wall and then let it just fade off before it gets to this wall. So this um, light value stretching across here until it gets to her and then dropping off a little bit and it'll bring more lines to her and make that, that shot work better. Thomas Jensen, we looked at this on the pro shot. We liked it a lot. One of the comments uh, uh, that that I had was, I love the surface that it's on. I think it's fantastic. But I think this, this handle is probably in the worst spot that it could be. It's either got to come down on this side where the light is so we can see it or up either way. And when you're shooting coffee for professional commercial um, things, we do not leave this right here on the rim uh, it's got to be cleaned off uh, q-tip whatever that rim has to be perfect uh Dwayne, i see you up there but i do not see oh it keeps saying offline so Dwayne, if you're listening uh, i do not have a uh, icon for you it keeps going to offline uh michelle bouchamp uh, also looked at on the pro shot this was very nice lighting to the front but our background died my question to him was what happens if we take a soft box back here, boom it up here, and just drive a little bit of light back here? Or even make light, dark, and then lighten it up back here so we have a sense of dimension and something uh, happening back there. Because right now it just kind of goes off. And really the eye wonders, what's, what's the point of anything past this? This could be a square photograph with no problem. That doesn't go anywhere back there. It, uh, it doesn't serve a purpose. F11. All right. Um, nice car. Nice car. Okay. Um, I When I looked at this, I really loved the wet uh, the drops on the highlight and everything. But when I looked at it, I thought, is there anything we can do to keep this bumper from just kind of, you know, kind of falling off into this, into this pole here? Is there any way we could do that? Maybe in Photoshop, uh, since it's already, the photograph's already taken. And I don't know what this is, this thing sticking down here. Um, my, uh, and I, I think F11 is a designer and art director too, so um, everybody does it differently. But my my brain would say, I'd, I'd, I'd clone that out of there. I don't like that thing sticking down. I think it ruins the line of this car, which is really from here, right down to here and right back. And if you take that out in your mind, you just, not these over here, that's fine. If you take this out in your mind, you'll see how much cleaner that the front of the car is. 
open up this down here just a little bit so we can see the red coming through and uh, pretty cool. And Tammy Bogstrand. Okay, Tammy. Uh, Dwayne, you're still not showing up. Uh, Tammy, uh, interesting uh, 1957 Ford Lincoln, and this is over in, I believe, Denmark is where uh, Tammy is. Um, and it's actually Highway 57. Isn't that pretty cool? A 57 on Highway 57. All right. That being said, the photograph is a little flat. I, I know there's fog back here, and I think we need to either enhance the fog, really bring it up so these people are going off into the fog, or clarify the image a little bit. Uh, I, I think it's a very cool car uh, on a very cool road with a, you know the fact that it's on the sign. Yeah, all that's cool, but let's make the shot really sing. Um, what if we really pulled this fog up really up so it was nice and bright and and handling uh uh handling the trees as as they're they're actually going off into the mist instead of emerging from the mist i think we might have a more interesting shot and something that would drive our attention again back to the back of this this old car cool and there's Dwayne middlebrook's picture and Dwayne is not online dang it um at least he's, let me go over here and find out. No, he is not there. Interesting. He must be having connection problems. Sorry about that, Dwayne. Um, sunset shot. Uh, we've got this, this um, the orange coming back here, and yet, and we, and it dies here into the mud. Um I'm of the, of the, I mean, it's already got some HDR things going to it. We got some real bright sun and some blue sky and you know, there's all this the clarity and things going on. We've already manipulated the photograph. So what we're going to do now to it is continue that manipulation. And I would bring some of this orange in a soft layer up here and blend it down onto these things here. So these, these tools, so it looks, uh, logs and little things here. So it looks like the orange is, is coming through here. See how that this edge catches the light right here? But it's catching white light, not orange light. We want to make this orange light so we have a feeling of this light is skipping across the water and getting in here, at least to my mind. Um, now, if, if that's not what Dwayne wants, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not the uh, end-all be-all to, um, to landscape photography. I just... I just miss it coming through here because it this doesn't hold up um, without it, without something. It just becomes a dark blob up front and all the pictures back there. Um, okay, Kevin and Tasha. Kevin and Tasha are in Chandler. Yes, it is hot. I'm not too far from Chandler. I'm over in Ahwatukee. Um, look west, see all the damage and destruction from the storm. That's me. Um, Okay, so we've got the uh, the Coke sitting on the ice, but what we don't have is the color of Coke, which is caramel. Coke is always caramel. This is dark. So what are we missing? Well, got a nice highlight over here. Mm, looks a little, uh, probably a little small. Uh, I would like to see a larger highlight with a strip light or a soft box or a shower curtain brought in close, what have you. To really get some light but what we also need is a light coming from behind it and the way you can do that simply is to cut a little piece of white foam core just a little bit smaller than this glass just a little bit smaller than the glass then you take that that foam core and you twist it away from this glass so that it's being lit up it's very bright from this light here so this light's lighting up the Coke, and then it's lighting up that white card that's just behind the Coke out of view. What happens is the white card lights up and we see it through the Coke. We see it right through here and it becomes, um, the Coke becomes more caramel colored uh, and fine. We also need a, some kind of card back here so we don't lose the drink glass into the background. And that's taking a little 
you know, one foot by six inch white card and sticking it back behind the Coke bottle or Coke glass. So you get it back far enough and you'll see that highlight. It'll be reflecting all we're all reflecting. All we're doing is looking at the Coke glass and the Coke glass, because it's round, it's going to get to one point where it's going to reflect that little white card back here. And that gives us the line right down the side there. All right. Tracy Sutherland. Um, okay. Tracy's liking this shot. That's, uh, that's cool. I think, um, either Tracy has a very large dog or she's found the, the machine that makes, you know, honey, I shrunk the kids, shrunk up one of the kids. Uh, it's obviously a composite and it's obviously one done very well. All this negative space works really well to help the drama come alive. Um, the fact that the dog is, is coming in from here and the child is totally within the frame, the dog is cut off, has to be because it's huge, didn't fit the frame. Uh, and then whatever's going on back here with this very shallow depth of field really keeps our, our attention centered right here on these two. Uh, very interesting shot, Tammy. I like it. J-Pod. Leading lines. Leading lines. Okay. A very, very solid shot. We have all of these perfectly vertical leading lines, and then we have this young person leaning off. So we have a vertical line that leads everywhere, and then our our person is asymmetrical to it. Uh, beautiful, simple horizon line. Wow, what's not to like about this shot? This is a beautiful photograph. Um, this is, is J-Pod. This is a beautiful photograph, J-Pod. Uh, stunning. I can see why you won something on that. That's a very, very cool shot. All right, Nicholas Bosshart. Okay, Nicholas, we've got the four guys walking. This is kind of a fun thing that, that what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to say you got to get a faster lens or find something, some place that's way farther back because the boat's in focus, our guys are in focus, and this guy's walking right into the boat. It's a tangent. We've lost our distance. If the boat was out of focus because of shallow depth of field, it wouldn't matter. But since it's sharp, it looks like he's walking right into the boat. Uh, light on the faces is good. This is a very dark photograph. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, just natural light, 8, 8 p.m. sun, camera right. Uh, okay, black and white processing, fine. Um, I'm going to make some suggestions. I would like to see some texture in these these gentlemen's jackets and uh, what they're doing. It's just some texture. So Nicholas, I'm thinking maybe get back up into uh, into Lightroom and just lighten this up a little bit uh, and then darken, if you can, that boat so that these guys pop from that boat. I don't If, if you lighten the boat, it's not going to work because his face is very light. When, when you're shooting dark faces, they reflect the light source. So a dark face is going to have a much more dramatic uh, specular, which is what's on here. The dark skin is giving you a very dramatic specular, but it's also giving you a white specular. So if you make the background brighter, you're going to confuse the eyes with the faces and the background. So that's why I was saying take the background darker. And I mean like 30 or 40 percent darker. Then accentuate the uh, specular highlight reflection there in the water. Accentuate that. Bring that up so their dark jackets and dark pants really pull from it. Um, and then and then do whatever you can to get rid of that highlight up there. That's the brightest thing in your photograph, and it shouldn't be. Brightest thing in your photograph should be these guys' faces, not this little piece of bridge up here. Because if you're sitting and you're looking and it pulls your eye. You can't stop looking at that because... It is the brightest area next to the darkest area on the page. It's the point of highest contrast, and it will always pull the eye. And we finally got Dwayne alive here. Mr. Middlebrook, are you back with us? Dwayne, are you there? 
Uh oh. No. TZ, Hello? am I coming through loud and clear for you? Hi, Don. Uh, please refresh, uh, refresh your page so you can see my phone. Okay. Uh-oh. Yep, I'm having the same here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You getting that server error thing? Yep. Yeah, the old new Facebook, the old new uh, 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 Flickr's got some server issues. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Come back with us. Is it still even looking? See? See, it's not even looking for the page now. Yes, okay. mine is still at the same, too. Well, any 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 uh, any questions, TZ, as we're waiting for your shot? And the same to Cadence. If you have any more questions, let me know. Well, I guess I did just buy this reflector, and I bought white on one side and silver and gold, the, the sunlight one on the other mm -hmm. side. Do you Good. have any tips on how to use that? to get the best Ooh. effects and when to use which side you're going to have so much of that in the uh, in the natural light course Excellent. because I use that thing all the time I have four of them awesome. I have two large and two medium and the reason is I tell everybody always buy two because sometimes you use them as light sources and you can match them where having a big one and a small one you'll have different catch lights in the eyes um, uh. and I really do like using them as, as light when you see See how cool it can be to take the diffuser out of the middle. You know, you, un you unzip it and you take the, the diffuser. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, they, they'll show you videos. It's all over YouTube where they have some guy holding it up, you know, six feet away from the person. And they're saying, see, it diffuses the light. Well, yeah, it kind of looks like a, um, a shadow to me. Mm -hmm. When you bring that, that diffuser right down on top of that person, six inches away from the top of their head to do that headshot, that will change everything. It, every time I do it, it's a visible gasp moment or an audible gasp moment at the workshops. I make cool. them look through the camera at the face. This is for like a headshot, head and shoulders. And then I take that diffuser from where the instructions say to use it down to about eight inches, yeah. six inches above the head. And wow, full noon sun, it doesn't matter. You have this giant soft light right over the top of their face and their, eye light, their eyes light up, uh, the whites of their eyes, the color of their eyes, everything comes through. It's really phenomenal. Okay. My husband said, he's a tech guy, he said he suggested closing your browser completely and then opening your browser again. I can try that. Cute. <laughs> uh, now, if I if I quit, if I quit my browser totally, though, am I going to lose my go to meeting? I don't know. I don't think so. Well, we'll find out. If I do, we'll uh, I'll get right back up on it. Okay. So I'm going to kill good. Chrome, and we're still there. Okay. Good. Good. And back down here to Chrome. Yeah, I'm having the same problem on my PC, by the way. So. Mm. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, my PC is frozen too. It's not finding anything. I got a a server error on the on the PC. I think Flickr is down because I'm not getting anything either. No, it looks like it's down to me. Yeah. TZ, I'm sorry, man. Uh, I'll give you the link to the image. Give me a second. Sure. <laughs> and you can see it in the chat. All right. So it, um, the photo had a text. And it's not the best image ever of a breakfast with a view to the monastery. Oh wow. That's that's so, nice. That's a nice shot. 
great um, that you're playing with that point of view. Really working the point of view looks really cool. Um, how good are you in Photoshop, TZ? Uh, really bad. Really bad? Okay, because what I was going to say is, you see where this sandwich comes up here? Yep. And we have this uh, this stuff, and then this, it, 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 this whole sandwich disappears because of this block back here. Mm -hmm. Now we pick it up with a T, we get this right here, and we come back over here, and we can see this stuff, but then this side of the glass disappears. TZ, can you send me this file? And I'll Photoshop it and video it and show you what I'm talking about. Yes. How you could. Uh, uh, by by the time it was morning and huh. I was using small flashes, so they were not that powerful. So I can use uh, wide apertures. Right. So I can have less depth of field. Uh, still notice the the monastery, but the then the. Um, it would be uh, uh, really burned in the the, yes. the monastery area. Yes, and um, one of the things with wide angle lenses, you can use the widest apertures you want, but you still end up with detail. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, you yeah. get up into the fifties or the eighty fives, and things start to change. But at the, this looks like a what twenty four? Uh, I believe it was a seventeen. 17, so very wide. At 17, even at 2.8, you're probably carrying your depth of field all the way through this guy anyway. Yeah. Um, um, so the, the, the thing to do then would be would have then been to bring your flashes in tighter and let the background go a little bit darker. Not that beat the sun dark. That's That looks terrible. But just a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. Yes. Set, um, Send me this image at about 2,000 pixels wide, and uh, I think it'd be a good study for everybody to, okay. to see um, how we could make it. Make it uh, this image is, is, was taken back in 2011, mm -hmm. and uh, as I told before, it's not the best image of a breakfast table, um, but it's the image of the job that really um, changed my perspective on photography and I just had just uh, came out from a news agency so this was my first commercial job there uh, you go. for a real client not just a guy on the server who sends emails all day um, <laughs> and uh, this made the trick and really was the turning point and from then, I just just decided that I want to invest all my money uh, in, in product and and food photography. Well, I'll tell you what, travel and food are two really good genres. Um, glad you're there. It's uh, it, yeah. Uh, you if you're going to be anywhere, I would think in that part of Europe uh, where you know. Tourism, tourism is big. You're in Portugal, um, Spain, Italy. I don't think I'd go to Greece. <laughs> yeah, Santorini, please. I, can, I would just pass on Greece, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, th then tourism is uh, is a big part of it, and and you're going to you're going to start to work with not only European clients, but international clients as well because of where you are that's what we want to push for them because you are where you are um you're you then that becomes your what's the word that becomes your 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 differentiating point you're saying look if you need really good travel photography why hire somebody in atlanta and send them over here hire me to go and do it and uh with budgets the way they are they're, you know, they're probably going to know the uh, exchange rate. Know they can pay you a little less than an American photographer or a British photographer, anyway. Um, still, yeah. be good money for you, and yeah. uh, you know, becomes a real important thing. This is not, not a bad shot at all here. Not a bad shot. Thank you. Send me that file, and I'll pop it up, and then you tell me what you think. Okay. Okay. You tell me well, if, and I'm certainly not going to HDR it. I don't do that. And Flickr is still down, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, well. I guess it could be worse. 
Uh, I'm going. Oh, to... this is Dwayne. Now that everything is down, I can connect. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dwayne, I think I think Flickr was waiting for your um, your uh, your moment there. Um, we looked at your shot. And... Yeah, I, I suppose so. Uh, did you hear the critique on your shot, or probably not? Uh, no, as usual, I can't connect until you've already passed my picture, irrespective of where it comes no, up. <laughs> no, where, where are you trying to connect from? Uh, I mean, Philippines. Oh, well, I'll tell you yes. what I'm going to tell you what Plus. I'll do next time, Dwayne. I'll go ahead and start the broadcast. Uh, it'll just be music playing, but let me start the broadcast about 20 minutes early and see if you can okay. get in, okay? So there won't be, I mean, once you get in, you're in, um, but um, I'll just go ahead and just hit the start broadcast and there'll just be music playing for about 20 minutes. So I'll give you some 20 minutes head up, heads up uh, or some time to get in, all right? Okay. We'll the way that. this is working now, uh, for me, it is 9 o'clock in the morning. And mm -hmm. I think it's just at the point where people are coming to work and booting up their computers and all of that stuff. And uh, uh, I can't get in there to something like this. But 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, it seems to be okay. Okay. Would it be better for me then to wait and do yours towards the end of the broadcast? I'm happy uh, to do that as well. Yes. You got it. I'll do that. I'll just uh, – and. Uh, and Cadence and TZ, if you guys could remind me, um, if I get to Dwayne's uh, and you're on the show, you can remind me. Now, there are only three people on the show tonight, Dwayne. So we have Cadence, oh. Williams, TZ Santos, and now uh, Dwayne. The, what I said about your photograph is we have, it's kind of an HDR effect. has a, got a lot of, of uh, clarity and stuff going on. But as the orange light bouncing across the water hits the foreground it's uh -huh. gone and what i'm saying is let's get in there and and add some of that orange coming across the wet sand and the and the the logs and bring it forward a little bit don't don't colorize okay. it just add a little tiny bit to it probably the way i would do it is I would move to a new layer. I'll, I'll copy the whole thing to a new layer. Are you with me? Okay. Then yeah. add then add orange up. <clears throat> add orange up that that foreground. Get it up into that orange color. Then uh -huh. I would use my history brush at about ten fit or fifteen percent. Then click it. You know. Go in your history, click up to your history brush. It goes back to the original. And now you're painting from the orange at about 10 or 15%. And just slightly paint that in, just on the highlights. But uh, let that that orange come through. Do you know how to do that? Or did I lose you? Okay. If you can still hear me and you and you know how to do that, that's cool. If you don't, Send me the image, and I'll make a real quick little uh, a video of what I'm talking about. I hope you can hear me there. So, um, and, he, and here we go. Okay, uh, TZ, Dwayne, if you're listening, Hello. and Cadence, I'm sending a new email tomorrow. It will have links. Okay. Uh, I heard somebody coming alive there. Bad connection, Dwayne. Uh -huh. Nope. <laughs> I'm gonna have to mute you because that's that ain't working. That's not working, Ma Dwayne. If you can hear me, it's just uh, you'll hear it on the tape. It's just it's just like a like a machine sound. Um, I will be sending you the, the links, the free links to the Udemy courses uh, with the uh, admonition that I would like you guys to, and you're getting it live, everybody else to get it on the newsletter and, and Saturday. Um, uh, or, or, um, wait, wait a minute. This is the essentials group, isn't it? Never mind. Yep. Scratch what I said. I'm thinking I'm, I got the pro group here and it's the essentials group. 
Oh, what the hell? I told I told you guys I'd send it. I'll send it to both you guys. Dwayne, if you want it, let me know. Send me an email. So I said I said I'd give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you anyway. Even though I, I thought I was on the group for a second there. <laughs> you still want it, Casey? For sure. I'd All love right. to. And and T Z, you want it as well? Please. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, please. Yeah. Sounded like please. yes, please. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll we'll handle it for you. And uh, uh Dwayne will get it out there for you as well. I can't tell if you're listening or not. No, it looks like he's offline. Uh I'll get those out to you. So um uh and I would say to um to Cadence, work with the natural light one first. Okay. And before you tackle the other one, there's a lot good, I mean. to be learned on the natural light. And most of everything we use on the natural light in the entire course are those reflectors and white bar, white boards. That's it. Awesome. So, yep. So enjoy. I'm All looking right. forward to it. Thank you so much, Don. You bet. Cadence, do you have my email? Um, I don't think I do. Okay. How do I? It's, it's simple. It's don.gianetti at gmail.com. Don.gianetti at gmail.com. And TZ, okay. same thing for you, sir. Send me an email so I can reply back with the links. Don.gianetti at gmail.com. And then don't mention it to other people that I, I was such a generous guy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thank no, you. No problem. I will see you guys next week. Thanks for being well, a part of it. Don? Yes. Uh, I have a few questions. Oh, sure. sure. Um, just, maybe it's just an advice. Um, I've been asked by a company for who I work a lot to uh, provide some quotations for um, gear. Okay, so they want to buy their own lighting equipment. Mm -hmm. So I can use whenever I am working there. Okay. Uh, because it's it's a twelve company group, and they must bet in something that can be portable. Okay, and move between the buildings. Okay. Easily. Um, so. Um, are, are they are they looking to buy high end gear, TZ, or are they uh, cost conscious? Well, they are a bit cost conscious. Okay. So uh, I was putting my money on some uh, off-camera flash, uh, especially small flashes, and some nice Apollo soft boxes, a yeah. few tripods. You'll be so uh, disappointed. You will be so disappointed. You're going to get into situations where those speed lights are just not going to work for you. Okay. Well, I know. I use those. I only use those. <sighs> yeah. Well, that's probably because you haven't used the big ones outside, right? Uh, yes. Th that yeah. shot was made with a, a, a small one. Yeah. And I used to, in, back, in the, um, uh, back in the news agency, we used to have these Quadra. Yes. From quadras. Alcron. Yeah, those are great. And, and they are uh, amazing. Um, yeah, I would. That, that's what it, I was going to say. I was going to tell you yes. to get a set of quadras and a batteries. Yes, that's what I was looking for too. Yes. The, um, the I I might bet on some um, hybrid case of flashes with some quadras and small flashes. Because... Well, yeah, this, this, I wasn't I wasn't meaning not to shoot the small flashes. I'm just saying yes, that yes. if that's all you have, you can really, really um get get uh, in a situation where all of a sudden you just don't have enough power at that distance to get what you need and um the little um yep. two lights that's, uh, that's where i'm going to yep. and the two light because... quadra with the batteries and then two additional speed lights cuz those mm -hmm. quadras the heads are so small you can stick them in a westcott apollo 28 right yes 400 watt seconds wow they just blast they just yep. plenty um, of light and very we likely have situations probably. where we can have to shoot. Um, I don't know big molds like the um, the the full um, side of a car. Can you imagine that? 
in a mold. So you can imagine that the mold has the same size as the car. And we also have to shoot small parts from prototypes. And those small parts can be as small as one or two centimeters. Yep. And for that, your speed light's going to work just really well. Yes, but not for the big, big molds. Nope, not for the big one. Not for those shots of uh, people that they're going to ask you to do eventually. Uh, you know? Yes, I do a lot of those too. Yep. And you and having that good, uh, good quadra pack, I, I was going to say a um, uh, a pair of Profoto, like a Profoto 600 and a 300 and two Innovatronics batteries, which are European batteries. Yes. Um, they would do you a, a nice, nice kit as well, but they're going to run you a little bit more than the quadra system. Um, and I, and as far as portability, the damn pro photos are heavy. They're just big bricks compared to those quadras where you can literally, uh, I have a friend and he keeps a quadra and a battery in his camera bag. That's how, well, you know how small they are yes, yes. <laughs> in his bag. It's that, that's his goal. Yeah. I got a strobe and it's a quadra. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> well, uh, can... I, I I tend to use um, always um, speed lights, mm -hmm. uh, but I I'm thinking about getting some um, more powerful. I'm not going to say decent because small flashes are decent too. Sure, depends yeah, on yeah. what they just use do them different for. things. Yes, exactly, and. Uh, because uh, I really want to get some for me too, um, and maybe the the quadras are the the way to go. It, they really, really are the um, uh, especially for like you say you want to do travel. Absolutely, uh, the, yeah. I don't know if there's anything any better now. If you're out trying to beat the sun every time you turn around, they're they're not enough power, but. For your style of photography, what I've seen of it so far, TZ, I don't see that being what you want to do. So you're you're more of a natural look to it, um, like mm -hmm. this shot right here in front of us. Very natural, nice natural feel to it. So anything else? No, no. Thank you. All right. Um, send me an email, TZ. Yes, it's coming in. I'll put you the link to the photo or send you the photo. Too. Send me the photo a little bit big. This is a little bit low res for. Yes, it's for the website. Yeah, a little bit low res. If you could send something like 2,000, 2,400 pixels, that's fine. Well, I'll send what, you the original. Whatever, doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll send you the original. Okay. All right. Cadence, TZ, thanks, guys. See you next time. Thank you, Don. Sounds good. Thanks.